So in this Insight tutorial video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up a very basic two-loop Tactis configuration. So firstly, we open up the LE2 Explorer software. And this can take up to 15 seconds or so to, to fully open up. So don't double click, just wait until you see the icon at the bottom. If you do double click, you'll get multiple versions of the uh, application running and that can cause you problems when you're trying to come uh, to the panel. Okay, so in this case, it, if your license is outrun, um, or run out, should I say, um, you will need to basically verify it and go back online and get an update and an extension to your license. I'm going to cancel this for the purposes of this tutorial. We'll then be shown this screen, which is basically the open network file. It's asking me if you want to open a file, connect to a panel, or create a new file. So we're going to create a new file, and in this case, I'm going to call it demo to quick guide, and then say save. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is add a panel. So I can either double click and it will ask me if I want to add a loop card to the panel. I'm going to say yes, two loops, and then say save. And you can see I have a node one panel sitting here. If I make sure that the site is still highlighted, I can also add a panel this way with the new wizard. When I open that up, it asks me what type of panel. At the moment it's only Tactis, so I'm just going to go Tactis AU. It's a Hochiki protocol panel. It's got two loops. I'm going to give it a name of, let's say, main FIP. And then you can give it a service provider name. So for service, actually, let's go for great service called Insight Buyer. And say next gives us a, um, a choice for the default ringing mode typically that's always common um, in the Australian market we say next there's our summary then asks us where we would like to return to when it closes the screen we we'll say loop explorer and you can now we'll ask us if we want to add another board we we'll just say save to that and you'll see there's two panels here now node 1 and node 2 so I'm going to just for the purposes of this video delete node 1 okay so node 1 is now deleted and we've just got a two loop panel and so the next thing I need to do is expand this uh, panel and go to the loop and you can see it opens up the icon uh, bar for the devices so we can use these filters so if I want to add detectors I can just go to detectors I'm going to double click and double click and it will add the detectors at the next available address on the loop that I have selected over in this window or if I wanted I could add it in a different format if I was adding multiple ones I might highlight the loop go to new wizard select the device that I want to add select the node and the loop is going on the address that they will start from let's go from address 5 for this purpose I might say they're all going into zone 2 Quantity, I might say I'm going to add five of them. They're all going to be called the warehouse one. Oops. Warehouse one. And then I can select whether they're fitted or not fitted. If I select fitted, if they're not attached to the loop, the panel will show a disconnected fault. If I select not fitted, and the detectors are not attached to the loop, it will not show up on the panel as a fault condition. I'm going to say add, close it, and you can see the here, these are the two that we added by the icons at the bottom, and these are the five that we added using the wizard. Okay, so next thing is we need to text our devices, etc. etc. So I can go to quick config. In here I can see I can change the zoning as I want. Then I could do the text if I wish as well. And copy and paste 
will work in here. And once I'm done, I can just go back to my config screen. So the next thing I might be doing if I was setting up a small panel is right clicking my panel and editing the panel details. So in here we can change the name as we did earlier or change the panel text. We can also ensure that the resale for fire in same zone is done. Certainly in the Australian market we always have that checked. We can set up our sounder circuits, there's four on Tactis, one, two, three and four. We can set them up as spurs or two loops, which effectively will then have some redundancy. This is where we can set the hotel mode or the alarm acknowledgement feature of the panel. And I'm going to save these settings as they currently are. Okay. So the next thing I might do is set up the call point on the front of the panel so I, I open up or expand the node go to my panel IOs and expand that and the call point is typically wired into programmable input number one by default so we're going to say aim FIP break pass okay I'm going to say bypasses all outputs, I change it from transparent to fire, very important that, and then we go to latching, and then say save, ok so there it is set up, the next thing I might do is my general disablement output uh, for my AAC, and that's always done from tactics from the alarm contact typically, it's the only one that can by default be set up as a general disablement, as this note here suggests if we untick all of these, including the silenceable, this now becomes a general disablement output, typically to ASE. I'm going to say save. Okay, so that's our output set. Now our fire contact is typically the one that's going to the brigade and if I double check it's been set up as default ring mode and it's not silenceable. So effectively when we set the silence the panel on the front um, it will not um, reset until we press the reset button. GFA to ASC typically. I'm going to say save. Okay. Right, so that's then bits done. Um, the next thing I might do is I might have some outputs that are going to be shutting down my mechanical um, cabinets. So I'm going to say, let's say a CHQ DRC. I'll double click and it's added it at address 3 there. So these outputs, if I have a look at that in the left hand window there's my two outputs and my one input so it might be that these are going to be basically the mech board shutdowns and I might want to ensure that these will be disabled when I press the plant di uh, disable all plant outputs in the disable menu of the Tactis that these are isolated to do that I ensure that this has been ticked and I might also say that this is going to be included in zonal disablements. So I might tick that box and then say save. And if this was also one, I would double click again. I would then say this is a plant control output and I want it to be included in any zonal disablements. Okay, so that's that done. Now we may also have um, some inputs coming back from let's say a um, valve monitor and a flow switch so let's add a PCM by double clicking it gets added to the next available address if I ever need to change any of these um, because it's the wrong address I can right click go down to device options and then change address and in there I can select the address that it's now going to be Okay, and there it is at address 10. Okay, so I now need to set up these inputs. So the first one will might be a flow switch. We 
which is a fire type event so we make sure it's fire it's going to bypass any output delays it'll be latching typically and then you'd set your zoning if there's any zoning that you want to maybe they're all going to go into all your flow switches maybe into 500 or something like that so you save and then the second one might be our valve monitor alarm so the valve monitor alarm depending on what state you are you're in you might require it to be an audible uh, uh, fire event on the panel or maybe just a fault type event if it's a fault type event um, that's going to operate a uh, let's say uh, the ASE input number two then you can either use fault or one of these others typically we can use the technical alarm and that will come up in the other events tab on the front of the fire panel so in this case let's go and use the tech alarm uh, flag so I'm just going to put only here BMA input and then say save obviously we make it latch in and bypass any output delays and then say save ok so if you remember correct we set up the fire one as a fire condition so it has the input action of fire so I'm going to set up now my relay that goes to my brigade for fire which is if you remember right the fire contact and by default it had the default ring mode ticked so this output will operate by any input no matter what the input is um, if it has been selected as a fire type input which our flow switch has been so that's already done so we don't need to create cause and effect for that also if we then look at the um, let's say relay number one which is one we're going to now program to be a VMA output to our brigade so VMA output to ASE IP2 input 2 ok so in this case we're going to use this but if you remember right the VMA input we checked as a tech alarm so if I tick that box there it means that this output will be operated by any input that's got the tech alarm selected so if I set all of my VMAs to tech alarm then it will come up on the panel in the other events it will oper operate that relay but it won't set the bells off um, obviously if you require that to be different then you give the VMA input a different type of event a fire or an evac or maybe a fault condition or something in the mind. ok or indeed you can create a whole cause and effects to do uh, to do a fire type event but that's a quick way to do it if it's on a small site so that gives you a brief overview on how to set up a small simple two loop um, type configuration within the Loop Explorer 2 configuration software. For further information and our other videos regarding Tactis and the other product ranges uh, of Insight, don't forget to check out the website which can be found at www.insightfire.com.au